Hi Geo, this is Unit 2, Lesson 2, and today we're going to talk about reflections off the coordinate plane. Um, so if we're looking at exercise 1, I have triangle ABC, that's over here on the left, and it's been reflected over line M to produce triangle A prime, B prime, C prime as shown. The diagram is drawn to scale. So the first one you're just going to have to do on your own. They want us to fold the paper along line M to verify that it is a rigid motion, that the two shapes can be made to coincide. Like, are they the exact same shape, exact same size? Do they coincide? And if you fold the paper along line M, not that you have to make a crease in it or anything, but you can see that C matches up with C prime, A matches up with A prime, B matches up with B prime. That's what it means to coincide. The points coincide. Now this part we'll do together. They want me to draw in the line segment, so to connect A to A prime, and I'm going to connect B to B prime, and I'm going to connect C to C prime. So I'm just going to use your straight edge and connect A to A prime, C to C prime, and B to B prime. Okay. And they want to know what angle do these segments make with line M. Now if you have a protractor you can measure the angle, but if you're looking at it right here, you can see that this is in fact a right angle. That this is 90 degrees right here, that's 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees right here, and this is 90 degrees right here. Okay, so the angle that the segments make with line M is a right angle. Move that down a bit. And then they want us to use our compass to measure the distance. So you don't necessarily have a ruler, but we're going to use our compass to measure the distance from each point to that line M. So if I measure like from B to line M, okay, so I'm just opening up my compass. And then I measure from B prime to line M, it is the exact same thing. And the same thing is going to be true. I'm just going to have to shift my compass down here. If I measure from A to line M and A prime to line M, it's also exactly the same. So there's A to line M. So I'm using my compass sort of as a rule and measuring that span. And A prime to line M, exactly the same. And then I can do the same thing with C and C prime. So I'm measuring from C prime to line M, and then I'm going to measure from C to line M. It's exactly the same. So the question says, uh, what do you notice about these distances? They are all equal. So what's the relationship between line M and each of the segments that were drawn in part B? If it makes a right angle, it's perpendicular, and it's also cutting it in half, that is, in fact, a perpendicular bisector. All right, because, oops, let me just get this compass out of the way. We showed that the distance between B and line M and B prime and line M was the same. Same thing for C to line M and C prime to line M. So these are all congruent, so that made line M a bisector. All right, during a reflection, R, R, R to R prime is 18 units. What is the distance from R to the line of reflection? Remember that line of reflection is right smack in the middle, so the distance from R to the line of reflection would have to be half of 18, and half of 18 is 9 units. Okay, so that's just reinforcing the fact that that line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector. It's exactly in half. All right, and then down on the bottom, we're going to do some more work with the compass. We now know that the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of the segments connecting the pre-image to the image point. We're going to use this along with our knowledge of constructions to construct the line of reflection. I'm going to connect any point to its image, so it doesn't matter which one that you do. I'm going to connect B to B prime, all right? Um, and then I want to draw the perpendicular bisector of this segment. So remember to draw the perpendicular bisector. That was a nice, easy one that we did. 
I take my compass, I put it on point B. The only rule I have to remember is I'm gonna open it more than halfway. I'm gonna draw an arc and then draw like half circle, then move it to B prime with the same exact setting and I'm going to draw an arc. Those arcs need to meet at the top and the bottom. Okay, and then using where they meet, I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to draw the actual perpendicular bisector. So that black line, let me just shift it over because I missed a little bit, is a perpendicular bisector. There we go. Adjust this one a little smidge on the bottom. Perfect. So that line right there is the line of reflection. Each point and its image are equidistant from this line. If I was to select another point, like say A and A prime, or D and D prime, or C and C prime, it doesn't matter which one, and I construct a perpendicular bisector, it would be the exact same line in the exact same spot. It doesn't matter which image and pre-image we connect, it will result in the same line. Okay? Let's shift over to the next page. So they want us to construct the line of reflection for each image and its pre-image. So the first thing we have to do is we have to draw a line connecting the image and the pre-image. So I'm just going to draw the corner of M right there and connect it to the image over there. And then I take out my compass and I Oops, I construct my perpendicular bisector because the perpendicular bisector is the line of reflection. So I just open it more than halfway, draw my arcs, move it over to the other point, draw my arcs, and where the two arcs meet, I will line that up with my straight edge and I will draw the line of reflection or perpendicular bisector. Okay, same thing for this one over here, this weird shape figure, connect any point to its image, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to connect A to A prime. And I will put my compass on A, as long as it's open more than halfway, it doesn't matter. And then I move over to the other point, as long as those arcs overlap and move my compass out of the way and I will connect that image and that pre-image. There is my line of reflection. All right, and then the last one down on the bottom, number five. Obtuse triangle RST is shown below with line M. Point S lies on line M. Lines are drawn in from the uh, vertices of RST that are per perpendicular to line M. Using a compass only, draw the image of triangle RST, and we're going to call that R prime, S prime, T prime, T prime after reflection in line M. Leave all relevant construction marks. Uh, so let's do this. Let's take my compass. I'm going to grab it from up here. So basically, how far away is R from line M? So I'm going to measure it out. I'm going to use my compass sort of as a ruler. The, the perpendicular line is already drawn, so there we go. That's how far away R is from line M. So the image has to be the exact same distance away. So this will be my image right there, R prime. Now you're going to have a little bit of trouble doing T because your compass will not get this small. If you can see that my compass is a little bit different. That's, I guess, one of the advantages to having this compass. But don't worry, I won't let that happen on a test. But you can just sort of eyeball it. But see how I can line it up? Your compass, the ones I gave you, those ruler compasses, can't get that small. So here I'm measuring it. And then I come over here. So you guys will just eyeball it. And there's going to be my T prime. Now S is already on the line. So I'm not going to do anything there. So this right here is T prime. Prime. And this right here is R prime. And then I will connect those together using my straight edge. Or you use your straight edge. I'm just going to use the line right here. And I'll answer those questions. Let me move my compass out of the way. Why are S and S uh, prime, why do they lie in the same spot? 
they lie in the same spot because S is on the line of reflection. So it has nowhere to go. It's already on that line of reflection. Draw segment T, T prime. Y is S, T, T prime. Isosceles. If you don't remember what isosceles means, look, look it up. So basically, I'm looking at this circle. Let me see if I can get a highlighter here. I don't know if I can, but I'll just grab a color. Um, maybe this is a highlighter. I'm not sure. No, it's not really. I'm going to just do this so you guys can see. They're talking about this triangle right there, and they want to know why that is um, an isosceles triangle. Okay, basically, it's got to be isosceles because st is congruent let me get a different color right here oh i got a different color so st this side right there whoops this side right there st is congruent to st prime so this side and this side are going to be the exact same because i did a reflection in a reflection the length of the segments stay the same so st is equal to ST prime. Okay, so that's an isosceles triangle.